there's really no hurry. And if the state, state sues, then the allottees can sue. Because if we vote no, that's it. That's the final word. And nobody can breach that. That's in our, in, in our, in our treaty. And that's going to be the final word. So the final word is no. And therefore, where we go from there is to negotiate along with the 415 other tribes. Let's talk about um, a lot of tea quantification and allocation. Uh, I think it was Bill that asked a question uh, this afternoon about quantification. Now, quantification is established by using the practical irrevocable acreage formula. Uh, that was set up in uh, Arizona, California versus Arizona. The PIA, a practical irrigable acreage, sets up a four uh, element test that determines who can use water and how much water each tribal member, a lati, can use on his or her property. That that uh, survey has been done by the federal government. And as I've said before, when I gave this presentation, I asked uh, Keith Bertus for that uh, survey and Bill Benjamin back in 1999, but they refused to give it to me because they say that's an, a, a piece of uh, uh, scientific information that's been developed for litigation. Uh, that's unfortunate. And the tribe hasn't uh, conducted its own PIA survey. So do you as a landowner know how much water you need on your land in order for you to irrigate your crop or, or water your cattle? I certainly don't. So we would have to go, if we renegotiated this compact, we'd have to go back to establish the PIA. And then we would know individually what water. First, we need to do a quantification and then uh, there should be some allocation to individual tribal members. I, I've been puzzled. Uh, a quantification and allocation issue also relates to the fact, as Dr. Waite has, has referred to, uh, there's a lot of water behind the dam. But I have a hard time envisioning how that, I have land right here, all over near where the uh, uh, pumping station is. I have a hard time conceiving of how the water is going to get from behind the dam over here to Crow. How is the delivery of water from behind the, uh, the dam going to be um, uh, uh, going to be in, uh, in, uh, in put in place? How how is it going to be developed so that all allottees get some water? To irrigate their, their property. I, I have a hard, there are a lot of mountains between the dam and Wyola. So how do the Wyola people get water? Are you going to drill through the mountain? I, I just, I have a hard time picturing it, so I think it's kind of an impossibility. And if this is uh, uh, 300 to 500 acre feet per annum, how is that water going to be released in the Bighorn, and then the Bighorn is going to deliver that water somewhere around the reservation to us. There are a lot of ups and downs across this reservation, and I don't envision an effective delivery system to folks that are in distant places on the other side of the mountain. So, my position is a lot of these get no water and no money. Why? Because Commerce under Lone Wolf versus Hitchcock, where Con uh, the Supreme Court said that under the uh, Commerce Clause, that the Congress has absolute power over Indians, has been applied to this particular water compact, and it has given the Alatis no water and no money. And that's a done deal after March 8th, if there's an election on March 8th. If you vote for it, Congress, you you essentially agreed with Congress for the water compact and agreed with the terms of the water compact. The other part of that is 
In addition to agreeing to the water compact and its terms, you've also agreed to the waiver, release and waiver provision, which is, I see it, a very dangerous tank trap. It's an omnibus, an all-encompassing waiver and release. It doesn't specifically identify what is being waived and released and by whom. If, oh, it does say by whom, tribes and Indians, members. So I'm releasing something that I don't know, I can't exactly identify. Am I releasing my right to sue because the tribe gave the Northern Cheyennes 30,000 acre feet and didn't get a dime for it? Am I releasing the state of Montana because the state of Montana and the state of Wyoming divided the Bighorn up 60-40 and the Crow tribe wasn't at that bargaining table? So retroactively, we're, we're releasing and, and, and waiving our right to go back in time to say we were denied due process when that all took place? I, I just don't know. So, the, uh, there's kind of a hitch here, and uh, I, I guess I could just best dis uh, uh, discuss it with you and describe it uh, as a constitutional violation of our Crow Constitution. Uh, you look at Section 2 and 3 of the Crow Constitution, and we have uh, language that says something like this. The Crow tribe shall not alter in any way or abridge individual property rights. Water is property. The Lattes get zero water. The Lattes property is worth something. The Lattes didn't get any money. So I call that a direct interference by the, by the Crow tribal administration with individual Lattes. That's a constitutional violation of our own constitution. Now, Dr. Wade told, talked to you about the money involved, and I've, I'm just covering, this is what I'm presenting tonight is a summary of issues. Um, it would be exhausting uh, to go uh, line by line and paragraph by paragraph with you. Uh, there is a water compact on the back table, as I understand it, and you can read it for yourself. And uh, I, I, there, it's, there's an analysis of it done by Jay Harris, who is a legal intern, a legal assistant with the Crow legislature, with regard to his uh, review of the Crow Water Compact. I don't have any uh, uh, major differences with him. I, I, I just agree with his conclusion, his 52-page conclusion, which he submitted to the Crow legislature, but I don't disagree with his analysis of the Crow Water Compact. I think he did that as accurately as he could. Also, uh, he uh, uh, prefaced his analysis of the Crow Water Compact with uh, 20 or 30 pages, I've forgotten how many now, uh, of uh, a, a historical uh, review, much like I gave this afternoon, which I don't agree, uh, which I do agree with, and which was uh, uh, more, much more detailed than the than the review I made this afternoon. So I don't I don't take exception to his review, and I don't take exception to uh, his historical history. I just disagree. Uh, and if you read his conclusion, uh, he says uh, conditionally, well, if this and this and this happens, then maybe everything will come out all right. Well, I don't want to keep my fingers crossed. Uh, hoping that everything will come out all right. If you're going to take my property, I've got a constitutional right to be compensated. And so do you. I don't want the money. I want the water. And I'd like to have it delivered to my property to breed horses or grow my, my wheat. You have that same right, or you will, if uh, you vote no on the water compact, and uh, you will probably, if 